Welcome back to Football Daily, where today we're building our team of the season. That's right, it's that time of the year again when EA Sports reveal the nominees for the Premier League team of the season on Ultimate Team for you guys at home to vote on. Now, you can vote by clicking the link in the description below. Today, I'm going to go through all of the nominees because I feel like there's some whiffers in there. I think there's some admissions in there. And then I am going to be building my own team of the season based on the nominees available. This is very self-explanatory. I hope you all get it, but I already know it's going to split opinion. Okay, let's start with the goalkeepers then. I mean, Nick Pope, you'd have to say part of the best defensive unit in the league. I don't think that's entirely down to him. I think the structure that Eddie Howe has created at Newcastle plays a large part. You know, it covers for some of Pope's deficiencies with his kicking, but no doubt he's been one of the best bargain signings of the season. Absolutely no doubt he's one of the best shot stoppers in the league. The Poundland Thibaut Courtois, he deserves to be on there. Aaron Ramsdale, also part of an excellent defensive unit, has revolutionised how Arsenal want to play football and he's so young in terms of goalkeepers. I feel like in a few years, probably more of a contender than he is right now. Alisson, for me, the best goalkeeper in the world. I think he encompasses all of the best goalkeeper's best traits. He's the best one-on-one -on -one goalkeeper in the world, a brilliant shot stopper, a fantastic distributor, claims everything from crosses, is just a serene, calming presence back there. For me, it has to be Alisson. I don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think Bern Leno has also had an amazing season. You know, if you look at the post-shot expected goals numbers, you put him up there. His fee was so small from Arsenal and Fulham have achieved so much. But I don't think he's on Alisson's level. Kepa? You know, we can hammer Chelsea and clearly they don't score enough goals and they're having a honking season and £600 million have been blown through. But the defence is the fourth best defensive unit in the league. By post-shot expected goals, he's massively overperformed. I still feel like there's big deficiencies in terms of coming and claiming crosses, letting balls come across the six-yard box. He doesn't have the calming presence of some of these other goalkeepers. I think it's an upgrade of warrior at Chelsea, to be honest with you. But Alisson, I mean, alongside, you know, Ter Stegen, Courtois, Mike Manuel, best goalkeepers in the world, definitely the best goalkeeper in the league for me. Let's go to the defensive unit then. I think there's only one right back here, and it's Kieran Trippier. I mean, probably rightly so. Ben White is another contender, in my opinion, in terms of what he's bought to that Arsenal side functionally. But Kieran Trippier, I think third most chances created in the league. He is something Ben White isn't really in terms of that chance creation. And he's also part of the best defensive unit in the league, which you can't take away from him. So, again, it has to be Trippier, in my opinion, in that right-back slot. There's not that many other options. You know, Reese James hasn't had a great season. Classically, you would have Trent Alexander-Arnold in here. He hasn't found his feet, although he has recently, playing in that sort of inverted position in a deep-line midfield role. Kieran Trippier, my outstanding right-back this season. Likewise, there hasn't been an abundance of outstanding left-backs, you know, Zinchenko and Shaw are the options here. I think Shaw's had a good season. I don't think he's had his best season at Manchester United, but he's definitely improved massively under Eric Ten Hag. We've even seen him utilised at centre-back at times. He's been one of the best left-backs in the league, but I don't think he's had the impact that Oleg Zinchenko has had on that Arsenal side. I know he hasn't put up, you know, every minute of every game numbers, but... When he plays, he is absolutely vital to Arsenal. How they've transitioned into one of the best sides in the league by inverting the fullbacks, allowing Zinchenko to play in that midfield space, pushing Xhaka further forward. It's just been genius by Arteta. And I think Zinchenko's leadership and his ability on the ball and his tactical you know, intelligence means he has to go in there. You can't quantify loads of his stuff by numbers, but... I'm going to pull up his FB ref because his progressive pass numbers, the things you just don't expect to see from fullbacks, are out of this world. This is what I'm talking about. Progressive passes, nearly 10 a game. You know, those are numbers that Luka Modric, Tony, they would all be proud of. This part of his game makes him the best left back in the league right now. Without Andy Robertson bombing on, having the season he wants to have, without having Jao Cancelo have a top season, I think there's a bit of a dearth of left back talent, but Zinchenko, he's scary, scary good. Let's move on to centre backs then, and there are some interesting shouts here. I mean, Guti Romero, 
Lucky to be in there. I think he's probably in there because, you know, World Cup winner, but top of the 14th best defensive record in the league. I feel like sometimes he can be outstanding out this world good. Other games when he's losing his head and he's rash, and he's making silly errors. I don't know. I wonder if the three at the back system really helps him as well. I think he's lucky to be on the list. I also think Ruben Diaz may be lucky to be on the list. I think John Stones has had a better season than him, even though he's only started 17 Premier League games. I think Ruben Diaz has started 18. I think John Stones has kind of propelled himself to being one of the best centre-backs in world football. His calm nature on the ball is massively underrated. It's so underrated by members of the public when he steps into that midfield role because he's that good. Pep Guardiola can basically play him as a centre-mid. Everybody goes, wow. John Stones here when he does that as a centre back as well. I think he's very unlucky, John Stones, not to be in. He'd almost be in my team, John Stones, if he was an option on here. I think Ben Mee is slightly lucky to be on here. I mean, Brentford have a worse defensive record than West Ham, Wolves, Fulham, Palace. They've been good, but I don't think they've been bright and good. I think Lewis Dunk has probably had a better season than him. I think they haven't been Aston Villa good. You know, Aston Villa since Unai Emery took over. It's hard to deny that Tyrone Mings potentially deserves a shout over a player like Ben Mee. And whilst we're on the topic of missing out players, where's Nathan Ake? Now, I'm hearing rumours it's something to do with the community team of the season, but Nathan Ake has been maybe Man City's player of the year outside of Erling Haaland. He has been unreal. He would have probably been in my team if I could have selected him, but I can't. I think I'm going to take Gabriel. It's between Gabriel and Saliba. I think you've got to have one Arsenal centre-back in there because Saliba has come in, changed the way they play a little bit like Zinchenko by allowing them to get high up the field. He's a much better distributor than you would give him credit for. But I think Gabriel might actually be the better defender of the two right now. Obviously, Saliba's so much younger than him. He's only 22 years old. By the time he's Gabriel's age, you would expect him to be far and away better. But I think right now, the season he's had, I'm going Gabriel. Lissandro could also be a candidate there. But I just don't think Man United players at the back can go in. Not with the 7-0, the 6 they conceded against Manchester City. They've shipped too many big goals in big games. He is an outstanding player, though, Lissandro Martinez. And, you know, gutted that he's going to miss the second half of the season. Thiago Silva... Again, you know, the defensive record's been good and he's been outstanding. But I think it's Sven Botman. I'm going to go Sven Botman and Gabriel. Not playing in their ideal positions because obviously Botman wants to play there as well. They're both left-footed. You wouldn't really play it. But I think because he's part of that Newcastle defence, which is shown as a unit so much, it would be a disservice only to have one Newcastle player in there. So I'm going to have Botman making his debut Premier League season at 23 as the outstanding centre-back, really, this season. He's blown me away with his ability on the ball, off the ball, his intelligence, his aerial ability, his strength. He's taken to the Premier League like he's played here for 10 years. So I'm going to go with that back four. I think it's very, very strong. Newcastle one side, Arsenal the other, Alisson in net. Let's go to the midfield where, again... I think there's some lucky players in here. I really do. Like, I love James Madison. Fantastic player. He really is a fantastic player. Nine goals, six assists this season. But, you know, Leicester in 19th. I don't feel like he's had the best second half of the season. They've really struggled. I think Benton Kerr was awesome for Tottenham when he was fit. But he's now been out for a really sustained period with that knee injury. Hoiberg. Not for me. Not when a player like Moises Caicedo is not on the list. I think Brighton have had an outstanding season. Moises Caicedo has been one of the best defensive midfielders in the league. Do I think Hoiberg has? No. I also think Douglas Luiz, Baston Villa, unlucky not to be in here, especially in terms of deep line playmakers if Hoiberg is in there. There's some good players on here, no doubt. And I, let's start picking players. For me, Rodri goes in. He's the best defensive midfielder in the league. I think Casemiro is the best out-and-out -out ball winner, but his suspensions across the second half of the season mean he effectively can't be picked in here. To miss nine matches, you know, it has cost Manchester United at times, and he simply hasn't been available enough. If he'd have played every minute of every game, then I would really be considering him alongside Rodri, but he hasn't. Uh, Thomas Partey as well. Where the hell is Thomas Partey? Huge omission. Not on the nominees. Crazy. 
But I'm going to have to go Rodri then in my defensive midfield role. I'm going to go Erdegaard alongside him. You know, 11 goals, 7 assists. Ultimate captain for Arsenal. Superb on the ball. Like, crazy good technically, Martin Erdegaard. I think he sits third on the list of chances created across the Premier League this season. Second is this guy here, Kevin De Bruyne. But that leaves another omission, doesn't it? Like, Madison's in there, yeah, but Bruno... I would have Bruno over Madison in there. I really would. I mean, most chances created from open play in the league. He has just been sensational for Manchester United. And he has these little moments, doesn't he, where he kicks up a fuss or he throws his arms up in the air and everybody gets on his back. But that's one in every 20 games. The other 20 games, he is the best player in the pitch. He is running the game. At times when Christian Eriksen has been injured recently, he's been playing as a deep-lying six, spraying the ball wherever he wants. He works so hard for the side. I would have to have Bruno Fernandes in there. Let's talk about a couple other names on here. Bruno Gimares, unlucky not to be in there. Could be in there if Erdegaard wasn't tearing it up and a contender for the Premier League Player of the Year. And if KDB hadn't put up 15 assists, then I think Bruno Gimares would be... You know, in my thoughts, Polini, the most tackles in the league. McAllister, I think, maybe a little bit lucky to be in there. Not sure about that. Matoma shouldn't be a midfielder, really, should he? Should be an attacker, but still wouldn't be in there. Might sneak into that left wing position eventually at the end of the season, but right now, no. Solly March, I mean, seven goals, seven assists from midfield. Super versatile player. You know, deserve his pet project, but I'm going to have to go for that midfield. I just, I just don't see anyone that can displace them. Yeah, I'm sticking with that. Okay, the front three, I think, is the easiest of the lot. Obviously, Erling Haaland, 47 goals in 40 games, 32 goals in the Premier League. He's going to smash through Mohamed Salah's record. He's going to smash through Andy Cole's record as well. I've never seen a finisher like him in the Premier League ever, and that includes, you know, Henri, who was a better all-round player, Aguero, a better all-round player, but I've never... Shearer, a better all-round player, but I've never seen a finisher like Haaland. He picks up chances in the best areas ever. All of his shots come from inside the box, in and around the six yard area. He always finds space. He always gets that extra yard. I've just never seen anything like it. If he can stay fit, he is gonna blow the Premier League records apart season after season. I think on the right, it's quite simple. It has to be Bukayo Saka. I think Saka, Haaland, Erdegaard are the three candidates for the Premier League Player of the Year. I've said on multiple videos before, Haaland for me is far and away clear. Any other 22-year-old that had come to the Premier League and in their first season had broken the Premier League all-time top scorer record by a mile, scored 50 goals in all competitions, and is potentially winning a treble, you know, any other player, it would be an absolute walk in the park. Yeah, I'm hearing Erdogan, I'm hearing Saka shouts because if they win the league, and... <sighs> Yeah, I don't know. I would just give it to Haaland. I think it's just absolutely ridiculous. That leaves the left wing slot, and it's a tough one, isn't it? I think for me, it's between Gabriel Martinelli and Marcus Rashford. Some of the other names, let's just quickly go through him. Kane, straight out shoot out with Haaland. Haaland's outscoring him. Kane's the better footballer, but you've got to go Haaland. Jack Grealish having an amazing season. Jack's better aspects are never going to run out in terms of huge goal scoring and assist numbers. If you look at some of his underlying numbers... You can really see why he is so influential on this Man City side. When you look at these progressive carry numbers, progressive passes received numbers, pass completion numbers, you see why Pep loves him so much. He is able to magnetise himself so that players get drawn into him, try and foul him, try and tackle him, and that creates space for other players. So I don't ever feel like he's going to be a 20 goal a season player or a 20 assist player, but... He's the type of player that makes everybody else look better, which is hard to quantify in the stats. I think he's having a really good season. Uh, Almiron had an amazing start to the season, but he's only scored two goals in 2023. Watkins, it's a shootout with Haaland. And admittedly, you know, since Unai Emery came in, I think it's the top scorer or the most goal involvement of any player in the Premier League alongside Haaland with 16. Havertz, how on earth is he on there? How on earth is Havertz on there? Havertz is in there. Tony's not. Tony scored 18 Premier League goals. No, not for me. I mean, Darwin as well. Not for me. Mares, he's been okay. Not Saka levels. Mo Salah, by the way. I know we kind of said Saka's running away with it, and I'm going to stick by that. But by pure numbers, Salah, 15 goals, 7 assists, 26 goals in all competitions this season. Still puts the numbers up, doesn't he? But the team has just been really poor. And 
he hasn't played to his usual standard. So I'm sticking with Saka, Haaland. And then as I said, it's a shootout between Gabriel Martinelli and Rashford. Gabriel Martinelli, 15 goals, 7 assists in the Premier League. Impressive, but I'm going for 28 goals, 8 assists, Marcus Rashford. I know a lot of those goals have come in other competitions, but without him, I feel like Man United would be miles off it. I think the second top scorer in all competitions is Bruno Fernandes on 10, who should definitely be a nominee here, by the way. But he's also been one of my favourite players to watch this season because of the way he plays, like this electric ability just to knock it go and it's just a way, shoot from 30 yards, top bins, goal. Gabriel Martinelli is a fantastic player playing in a better team and a better system than Manchester United currently have with Marcus Rashford. I think Marcus Rashford individually has just had a better season, whereas Gabriel Martinelli as a group has definitely had a better season and is no doubt an absolutely ridiculous player. Uh, I'm going to go Rashford, Haaland, Saka as my front three. Erdegaard, Rodri, KDB as my midfield three. Zinchenko, Gabriel, Botman, Trippier and Alisson in net. Now, I know loads of people will be disagreeing with me vehemently in the comments section. Let me know your EA Sports team of the season in the comments below right now. If you want to submit yours, you can go and submit your vote by clicking the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, hit subscribe. Thanks very much for watching. We'll see you later.